I'm Brian from RC Workboat Haven. Welcome to part two of the fiberglass hull build. In part one, we waxed these four molds. We placed a resin boundary tape. We used a PVA substitute. We applied one coat of gel coat and then laid up two layers of one ounce mat. In part two, we're going to take these parts as you see them and we'll step by step finish the boat. Thanks for watching. The moles all have a masking tape boundary for the resin around the perimeter and the, the resin and gel coat has built up a little bit on the inside of the tape but that buildup is still quite thin and the tape is bendable. So what I'm going to do is use a file and just run the file. Applying the tape has made a very accurate surface for the overall outline of the layup and then by just filing like this We've got a pretty well perfect part with almost no mess or cleanup. It, it's fairly straightforward to uh, file this edge all the way around the flange mold and after I've done that I just go over it with 80 grit and make sure there's nothing that can uh, cut the hand and nothing sticking up. On the hull molds the area from the bow along the shear line all the way along towards the stern and this area here can all be cleaned up using the same file method. This area starting down here is fairly difficult to get into. So I'm going to use a rotary rasp and a drill and the idea is to go along at low RPM there's no need to throw up a lot of dust so now the two halves have been cleaned up around the bottom part and I've just lightly sanded the interior of both hulls with 80 grit sandpaper. So now that there's a reduced chance of damage to the flange, I'll remove the tape. And it should pull off fairly cleanly. Just a few little pieces in here that I'll have to uh, get my uh, nail under or use a piece of plastic but they all come off fairly well because they've been pva so the tape comes off nice and cleanly i'll bring all four molds up to the same stage now a two-part mold doesn't have nearly the, the pressure of holding the part in as a single part mold i'll be using a little plastic sculpting tool that's uh, quite soft and flexible. Start the release is along the shear line where I can go straight down with my wedge and give it a tap. There we go. So now this wedge can be worked along gently. And I think we've got it. And there's the part. Now the two sides that form the hull, these are female molds. The part is laid up inside the female. But the flange molds are male molds. The part is laid up on top of the mold. Just pick a spot, tap it in, 
and run along. And that's a flange. And then of course the deck can be fastened directly onto the flange. So we have to fasten the two hull sides together and we'll put the flanges in after that. So now I'm going to tip the two sides up. And put a clamp on it right here. I'm using 3 16 nuts and bolts. I'm going to put one in through the top hole and just finger tighten it. Good. Now I know it won't move. Now I'll go around to the stern and put the clamp there. Now on the stern, I'm going to put one more nut and bolt in the top hole. And now I'll put in the rest of the nuts and bolts. Now everything is in alignment. So using super glue, I'm going to put a few dots all the way along the hull to join the two parts together. My objective here is to be able to remove the hull from these two molds in one piece. So I'm going to file this off right now. I'll use thin scotch tape and cover the seams. Put the hull back into the mold. We're going to bring out the scrap bucket and we're going to cut some strips about 5 sixteenths of an inch wide. We're going to get these pieces and lay them down into the, into the joint area. And press them in. And we'll go all the way along and make sure that there's one ounce mat covering every part of the joint. Next step, I'll mix up a hot batch of resin and saturate this seam. I mixed up 100 milliliters of resin. This is all set up. I want to file off a little piece of mat at the bow and the stern that's coming up above the, uh, the top of the shear line. And I don't want to scratch my mold. So I'm going to set a piece of masking tape right here. And that should help me file this off flush without any damage. So that worked. Now I'm just going to sand the area where the flange meets the hull. I'm trying to make the layup thickness as consistent as possible. Next, the deck flanges are fitted to the hull. They're just clamped in place. They required a little bit of filing at the stern and the bow. I mixed up a small amount of uh, Bondo short strand fiberglass and with a putty knife I just spread some fairly evenly across the hull in the flange area. And then I got the uh, port side flange, set it in place, I clamped it and then I used masking tape to try to make the um, width of the uh, layup consistent. So now I'll repeat the same process for the starboard side. There's a split right here at the bow and stern on the deck flange and I've just cut a small piece of scrap fiberglass and I'll epoxy that on.
One reason that gel coat is used on fiberglass hulls is to provide a tough, waterproof finish. If I leave this mat inside the hull just like it is, it will absorb water and everything else. So if uh, lubrication grease, for example, was spilled inside this hull, if I left it like this and I wiped it, that lubrication oil goes will be soaked right into the layup. Now I'm going to put one coat of white gel coat on the inside of the hull and under the flange. And here is the layer of gel coat that I've put in the hull here. It has added strength to the layup. Now I'll give you a few tips that I've learned the hard way about laying up these hulls. First, you have to make sure you follow all the rules when it comes to waxing. You can't skimp on that. PVA. Now, we're using hairspray here, and the advantage is you can get an extremely fine mist. But even that just takes a bit of overspraying, and it'll run. And that will result in an imperfection in the gel coat. Another thing you have to watch for as a hobbyist is the gel coat. Now it is possible to put on one layer of gel coat, but it has to be thick. There can't be any thin spots. The safest way to do it is in two layers of gel coat. So after the PVA, you lay on just a moderately thick layer of gel coat. Let that set up for a day or two, There's, it's not critical, and then apply another layer. With one ounce mat, it's very thin. So it's easy to saturate that with a brush, and I have no need to use a roller. It's been a successful build. The whole hobby for me has been fascinating, and the, uh, the idea of making my own fiberglass hulls and parts is, is really uh, a hobby in itself. Thanks for watching.